Got to move on. Got to move on. Uh, 732582, you're live. Shalom, shalom. This is devoted to y'all calling in. Can you hear me? Brother, what's going down? I can hear you. What's going on? I, uh, I took a sacrifice, took a little early nap, and I woke up in the middle of my sleep so I could be here today. And it sounds like I came in on time. I called in. I hear my name being uh, talked about. I'm going to tell you what's lunacy. I debated Amayan. If nobody saw that debate, I encourage you to go listen to the entire debate. Is Yahusha the most high? This is what lunacy is. Lunacy is not having any precept in the Tanakh to defend the worship to another lesser God. That's lunacy. Lunacy is believing in a New Testament that tells you that Israel is married to a lesser God than Yah, the Most High. That is lunacy. Either that's lunacy or you have to divorce yourself from the New Testament with that understanding because you would be in another religion that is foreign to the Hebrew Israelites who worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who go by the Torah and the prophets. Lunacy? Lunacy is saying that Israel is married. Part of Israel is married to a lesser God. Part of Israel is in covenant, in marital, in marital spiritual covenant with another God that is lesser than the Most High. Where? Please help me understand. I did not hear this entire debate, so I don't know if this was addressed, but where is the precept in the Tanakh to support this idea that the Father, the Most High, would give over his bride, Israel, not, not just his bride, his, his wife, Israel, to a God that is lesser than himself in marital covenant. Please help me understand. That, that's my first question to uh, the Unitarian on this debate. I believe, I don't know if it's Brother Ron, if I heard correctly when I came in. He's the one that doesn't believe Yahusha, yeah. the Messiah, is the Most High. So that's my first question. But I also want to address the issue that was being brought up before. How is he saying, sit at my right hand? Let's go to Scripture. 1 Samuel, chapter 8. 1 Samuel, chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 1. Might as well start at the beginning. It says, when Samuel was old, he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiyah. They were judges in Beersheba. His sons didn't walk in his ways, but turned away after dishonest gain, took bribes, and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel, Samuel to Ramah. They said to him, quote, Behold, you are old, and your sons don't walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like the nations. If you guys don't know, up until this point, there were no kings in Israel. There was never kings until after this point. There were judges. That's as far as we got to head over Israel were judges. But here, here Israel is saying, behold, you are old and your sons don't walk in your way. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Verse 6, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. Samuel prayed to Yahuwah. So he took this to the Father. And what was the response? Verse 7, Yahuwah said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people and all that they tell you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me as the king over them. What's going on here? Yah, the father, is being the father. He's being the king in heaven, and he's being the king in the earth. All at the same time. So he can be all in all. There will never be a perfect king 
in Israel unless it is God himself. So guess what? He did it. That's how he can speak to himself and say, sit at my right hand. So he can get all the glory so that in Revelation chapter 5, So that in Revelation chapter 5, all that's in heaven and all that is in the earth and all that is in, on top of the earth, in the middle of the earth, on the side of the earth, everywhere, all over heaven and everywhere, outside and inside, everywhere, all the creatures, heavenly creatures, everything can say all glory and power and honor and dominion be unto him who sits on the throne, that's the Father, that is Yah, the Most High, and to the Lamb. That's how. So I'm answering that question. If you have any further questions, you can ask me while I'm here. But my first question is going to be, where is the precept? Where is the Tanakh, the Old Testament precept for Israel, the wife, the bride of Yah, being given over to a lesser God than himself? It's the same question I ask Christians. Where is the precept? for a lawless gospel that the law will be done away with and nailed to a cross. Where is that in the Old Testament? They can't come up with it. So that's my question. I will yield my time. Yeah, Brother Ron, you can respond. Okay, so this guy um, responds to um, Psalms 110. He goes to, he goes to Samuel. All right, dude. He goes to Samuel and then makes up this um, delusion in his mind and say, oh, yeah, this, this, this is scripture. All right. All right, dude. Okay. Well, my question is to you is, okay, um, what's your explanation? Um, how do you rationalize Hebrews 1.6? Can you explain that to me? It says, again, when he brings in the first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. What does that mean to you? So this is talking about the, um, God the Father? Or does it say when he brings in forth his first begotten? Answer that question. Very nice. I like how you avoid my question and ask me a question. That's very nice. I hope everybody can see that. Uh, he doesn't have an answer for my question. It's exactly what Christians do. Uh, you ask them to give you a precept for why is the law done away with in the Old Testament, and they're going to take you to uh, something maybe Romans 14 and say, okay, what about Romans 14? Doesn't it say that we can eat all things? You see how they just switch the topic? Okay, that's fine. Just notice that. I want, the, I want everybody listening to notice that. See, but I'm not that kind of guy. I'm a straight shooter. I'll answer your question. Here's why all the angels will worship Yahusha, the first begotten, the firstborn. Because that firstborn child is not no normal child. It's not an angel. That child is Emmanuel. That is L, L, which is reserved for God alone, that title, L, with us, with us. So it makes perfect sense that that child would be worshipped by humans and angels. Now, can you answer my question? I'll give you a second try. First of all, brother, you want to bring up on. Um... Yeah. First of all, brother, you want to bring up the prophet Isaiah and say when it says um, Emmanuel, um, that's that's your answer to it. That that means oh, this is the Most High. When in actuality, that was a twofold prophecy anyway. It's talking about Isaiah's son. So is Isaiah's son? Is God? Is he the Most High? Answer that question. I know you're not because you're afraid to because you know what I'm saying is true, bro. It's a double prophecy, so you don't even know what you're talking about. You're taking things out of context, and then you just just making up this delusion. And, bro, that didn't answer the question. It says, again, when he bring in his first begotten, the Most High never begot himself. Begotten means bring forth. He brought his son into the world. And it says, let the angels worship him. The first thing you asked when you came on here, you said, when did the Most High give somebody else's authority to get worship. So I took you to the scripture. I'm asking the question that you asked when you first came on here. So you need to ask the question and stop saying, oh, I'm dodging. No, 
This is what you act when you first came on the show. All right, guys. That, uh, the so, so mm-hmm. if I understand you correctly, <laughs> first of all, you're still ducking and dodging, but okay, I'll go with you on the worship. So you're saying Emmanuel is a human son, but then at the same time, you're saying that that is evidence that God gave somebody over to be worshipped. Is that correct? Dude, what are you talking about? Anybody who understand that prophecy know it was talking about, first of all, nowhere in Scripture you'll ever see Yeshua calling, be called Emmanuel, first of all. And Isaiah's son wasn't called Emmanuel. If you go to the next chapter, it didn't call him Emmanuel. Anyway, but we understand, and I do agree, it was talking about him. But, bro, you cannot use this to explain Hebrews chapter 1, 6, bro. You're ducking and dodging this. You came on here, you asked, when did the Most High give authority? So we went to this scripture. You're ducking and dodging, then you're trying to say, I'm doing that. But it just say you don't know the answer. Um, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ron. Yeah. Let, let me let the voter get some last words because we got some other callers saying everybody winding down too. The voter get some last words, brother. That. Yeah, I'll get some last words since Ron doesn't want to address my question. Uh, he's, he's dancing around. Uh, he just said that he was never called Emmanuel. I'm going to expose his lie. Matthew chapter one, verse twenty-three. Matter of fact, I'll go back a little more. Verse 21, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says, She shall give birth to a son. You shall name him Yahusha. For it is he who shall save his people from their sins. So, first of all, this child being born is dying for his own people. That would make him the king of all and the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, right? Yahuwah is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He's dying for his people. He's not dying for Yah's people. But I'll keep going. 22. Now all this happened that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Yahuwah through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall give birth to a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. Yahuwah with us. You might as well say it. El with us. Yahuwah with us which is being interpreted, God with us. There it is. It's breaking it down for you right there. So what are they, I don't know who this guy, Ron, is he an Old Testament only believer or something? Maybe, maybe that would explain his uh, dancing and ducking and dodging. But I'm giving straightforward answers to your questions, but you're not giving me any Old Testament precept to where the father would give over Israel, his bride, to a lesser God than himself. There's no Old Testament precept, there's no Torah, there's no prophet, there's no precept. So if you don't believe in the New Testament, Ron, I completely understand your stance. Makes sense. But if, you're, if you claim to be a New Testament believer, you're the one that is uh, uh, lunic, lunacy, you're a lunatic, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's my uh, re- reply to Ron. I mean, appreciate the call, brother Jason. You want to respond, Jason? Right. I, I just want to say shalom to brother D. And um, you know, there's nothing more to say. You know, he 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 said it well. All right, all right. So I see we got two more callers, and I think I'm going to wrap this up, y'all. All right. Once again, I appreciate everybody that called in. Of course, you know, without you, the information wouldn't get out there. So. We appreciate all the callers and all the special guests that join the platform. Uh, let's see. Let me go to um, 786-304. You're live. 786-304. Can you hear me? All right, 786. Go on once. 786. <laughs> go on twice. All right. <clears throat> All right, we got the last caller here. Uh, three, two, three, you're live. All right, thank you, Sal. Um, devoted to y'all, like, again, uh, what are you saying is, is, a, is a whole bunch of lunacy again? Because he, he went to Samuel's to answer Psalms 110. 
where God is speaking to the Messiah to sit on his right hand. Nowhere in Psalms 110 where he read explains anything that's going on in Psalms 110 whatsoever. He went there and he talked about how God told Samuel that they have not turned away from you, but turned away from me. How does any of that explain God speaking to himself in Psalms 110 to sit by himself until he make himself, his enemies, his footstool? How does any of that in First Samuel explain any of that in, in uh, Psalms 110? None of it does. Again, it is clear lunacy, okay? He's reading it and then starts saying stuff that he's God in heaven, he's God on the earth. Nowhere there does it say that in Psalms at all. He's just adding that to the text. That's what he's doing. He's actually in violation of the Torah. It says don't add to it or take away from it. He's actually violating Torah when he's making these statements because he cannot read them verbatim out the Bible. Devoted to Yah, in our debate, stated, well, I, I stated that he admitted that Israel is married to Satan. Anybody can go ask him. This is facts. I'm not lying on him at all. He said Israel is married to Satan. I asked him what scripture says that Israel is married to Satan. He says right now, right now in 2019, Israel is married to Satan is what devoted to y'all believes right now. Okay? And when Christ come back, who he claim is God, then they're going to marry Christ. What scriptures say that Israel is married to Satan? None of them say that. Now let me address this question about these uh, uh, Israel be married to God and then to a lesser God, meaning Christ. It tells you in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, down to 30, uh, 34, it tells you when Christ come, he shall send his angels and they shall gather his elect from the four corners. Paul tells us that at the last trump, the dead in Christ is going to rise first, okay? And then they shall be with Christ forever. That's what it says. The dead in Christ, okay? St. John chapter 17, verse 1 tells us that there are certain people that God has given to Christ. You can read it for yourself. There are certain people in Israel that he has given to Jesus Christ, okay? Out of the nation of Israel. When you read Hosea chapter 2, it talks about Israel going back to the wilderness, okay? And also in Ezekiel chapter 20, it talks about Israel going back to the wilderness. But in Hosea, it tells you that that's where he's going to make a contract with Israel, and they shall call him husband there in Hosea, okay? So there's, there's, there's separation within Israel. You have some Israelites going back to the wilderness, where they're going to be married to the Most High, and you have certain Israelites who are going to be caught up with Christ, his body, and they shall be married to Christ. These are all factual scriptures from Old Testament to New Testament that there is a separation within the nation of Israel because all Israel is not of Israel, according to how Paul is breaking it down, that there are spiritual Israelites who are spiritual-minded through the, through the Messiah, and then there are Israelites who are carnal-minded who got to go back to the wilderness and purge out the rebels, and then those people should be married to the Most High. These are all factual, and I showed all these things in my debate with devoted to Yah. Okay, so you can go back to my debate with him. You can hear all these facts for yourself, okay? And again, lastly, devoted to Yah, stop stealing my word lunacy. I said it first, okay? You're plagiarizing, okay? Find your own words, bro. And please, for God's sake, brother, make some sense. Shalom. Uh, now, you know, devoted to y'all, press number one, this is the last call. <laughs> After that, you're going straight to the final statement, y'all. All right, devoted to y'all, guys, man. Here you go. I'm a Yan, the dispensationalist. <laughs> Might as well throw him in with the Christians because it's the same dang thing. This guy preaches a pre-tribulation rapture and, and 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 and, a, and a two different gods and two different Israels and two different assemblies. I might as well call one church. I mean, he uses Christ and, and Jesus. I mean, he's he's pretty much pagan anyway. Uh, so, but there you go. Uh, he jumps around with you, going from Matthew 24, trying to follow along with him. He's he's just making stuff up. Uh, he's, he then he goes to Hosea. Who in Hosea is making a covenant with Israel? Uh, a marital covenant with Israel. It's Yahuwah. Obviously, there's nobody else. 
So when the people are resurrected, in the book of Revelation, you see that there's going to be a time where the Messiah rules and reigns on the earth for a thousand years. And then there's going to be a resurrection. And there are two resurrections according to the book of Revelation. So why, why wouldn't the people being resurrected be brought back into marriage covenant with the original creator? Where, where is, again, where is the concept? He, he didn't answer the question of where in the Old Testament is the precept for part of Israel marrying another God. You see how he skips right over that. He, he dances, he duckes and dodges. And he won't give you that answer. He does what the Christians do. They tell you to just believe. Just believe. And they go to New Testament scriptures and tell you to just believe. So because you got Yahusha, the Messiah, being called the bridegroom to a group of people, that must mean that this group of people is a different group of people than the original Israel. But that's not what the New Testament teaches. The New Testament teaches that in Romans chapter 11, there is a olive tree, a natural olive tree, which is Israel, and then there are wild branches or wild olives that are grafted into that olive, original natural olive tree. There is no such thing as two different trees. There's not a, a Gentile tree that is married to Israel or some other Israel, a second Israel tree that is married to the Messiah, and the first Israel tree is married to Yahuwah. No, there's one tree. There is one assembly. There is one congregation. There is one kingdom. There is one Israel, and there is one messianic anointed king for that Israel, and there is one heavenly king for that one Israel. There is no such thing. It is, it is dispensationalism and replacement theology to believe in this lie. I wonder if Ron believes the same thing. I wonder if Ron believes, that was one of the questions I had too. I wonder if Ron agrees with Amayan's ridiculous Hebrew, <laughs> Hebrew linguistic knowledge. He claims to be a, ling a linguist. I don't know one person that teaches Hebrew that says that Genesis chapter 1 is not let us make man. I wonder if Ron believes the same thing. I wonder if Ron believes that Israel's married to, partially married to a lesser God, and the other part of Israel is married to the one and only true God. I wonder if Ron believes the same thing, or if he's just letting Amayan just talk to defend his side. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got to say. And yes, it's lunacy. Lunacy! 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 <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I look like it's look like it look like it's gonna be the making of another show between Amayan and Devoted to Yah and season ten of the Bay Talk for you. Hey, you know, season ten begins September twenty third. You never know. <laughs> but anyway, we gotta go to the final statement, y'all. We winding down, we winding down. So let's go to uh 